to order. And without objection, the chair is authorized to declare a recess at any time. But I don't think we're going to have to today, which is uh, rare for once, right? Um, and I want to say good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for, for being here. We are at a very pivotal time in our, our nation's history. Um, as technology becomes more and more a part of our lives, our society and its institutions must keep pace. But the technology itself is only half the equation, as all of you know. Technology still requires people. People to monitor, upgrade, inspect, and safeguard the technology. That is why we are here today, to discuss the human element and the policies we as a Congress need to advance um, the federal IT workforce and make sure it's comprised of qualified IT and, and cybersecurity professionals. Right now, federal agencies are facing a shortage of IT and cybersecurity professionals in a highly competitive marketplace. Um, during one of our last hearings on this subject, one witness testified that 209,000 cybersecurity jobs went unfilled in 2015. That's a pretty large number. Um, that's why I've been advancing the idea of a cyber national guard which you know, was first brought up to us at a field hearing um, in Chicago. Yeah, so thank you, Robin Kelly. Uh, and this is really a way to talk about how do we recruit and hire qualified individuals to the federal IT workforce and then retain their skills in the future on a rotational basis. It's real simple. There's several, you know, most of these hearings, I usually know the answer to the questions that I'm going to ask. This is one where I do not. And the idea is, is this. What are the gaps in the CIO's offices from GS13 below? We've got to figure out what that gap is. Right? And, and we're working to do that um, so that we can figure out who, what are those jobs that we're trying to target. Do we do it by giving high school kids scholarships to go to college? Do we do it by forgiving debt uh, for people that have the jobs we need to go into those positions that we need? If it's giving scholarships, where do we find the money? Right. So that's the first piece. Once we identify the need, the first step is how do we get young people into the, their first step being the federal government in the .gov space? Second piece is, how do we, once they come and work for the government and they go out in private sector, how do we get them back in on a rotational basis? What are the jobs that, wrote that would be achieved through that rotational basis? Um, and that's made the jobs are going to be different than the ones that we're trying to target by creating some kind of scholarship program. The concept is actually quite simple. And then once we figure out how we get these people back in on a rotational basis, how often will they do that? You know, the, the National Guard is the, you know, the proverbial one week in a month, two weeks a year. But does that have enough, um, um, that's going to impact business processes at that company. So is it 10 days a quarter? Is it, you know, 15 days every six months? Um, and what are those jobs that those people can be coming back into and working on? Right? These, these are the steps in the process. I see it three phases once we identify um, you know, who, what jobs we're going to target. And hopefully um, we have some time to explore these ideas here today. And with that, it is my honor and my privilege to introduce not only the ranking member of this committee, but my good friend, um, Robin Kelly from the great state of Illinois. 